And so here's what we're going to do. We're going to ask you just one more time, if you don't mind standing, sorry, just one more time. Um, the reason we stand when we get ready to read the Word of God is because we believe that it's God is God. The God's Word is God breathe. It is our basic instruction before leaving Earth. Um, we honor the Word, and so we stand for it. Amen. The Scripture today is going to come from Genesis chapter one, verse twenty-eight. And I don't know if y'all could do me a favor for the media team. If y'all could just change the exposure on the camera so that they could see me um, and bring the house lights down, because you know not everyone got that good eyesight. Amen. I see some of them streaming and looking hard at the screen. <laughs> Um, and so, amen. The Bible says in Genesis 1 verse 28, it says, Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with what in it? With what in it? And he says, they will be yours for food. Today, if I could tag a topic to the text, it would be seed of possibility seed of possibility and seeds of potential amen i want you to do me a favor just before i pray look at your neighbor because we let you we let we like for you to talk to people in church amen so look at your neighbor say neighbor did you know that you were created to produce Okay, you talked to the wrong person. I, I don't know. Amen. Turn to, some, turn to somebody else. <laughs> turn to them and say, neighbor, did you know you were created to produce? Amen. Pray with me. Father, I pray that I decrease, that you increase. I pray, Father God, that as we get ready to deposit the word of God, that we would hear it, Father God, with spiritual heirs, that enemy would not be able to come and steal this word from us today, but, Father God, that it would be deposited in hearts that are prepared and ready for everything that you have for them in 2023. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Today we're talking about the seed of possibility, you know, and in this moment, I believe that we stand securely situated between today and tomorrow, between our history and our destiny. And I came to let you know that I had a conversation with you yesterday, and I had a conversation with you today, and you today wanted me to let you know that your tomorrow looks real good. Come on now, somebody. And because I had this conversation, amen, they wanted me to let you know that regardless of what you've experienced in your yesterday, and regardless of what you may be experiencing today, that God has great plans for your tomorrow. Come on now. And the reason why I know that, because I found your tomorrow tomorrow situated in the pages of Jeremiah 29 verse 11 and it says this for I know the plans I have for you how much of you glad that God got some plans for us see because there's a lot of plans that people may have for your life but I am grateful that God got a plan even before I was formed in my mother's womb I like to say it like this even before my great granddaddy knew my great grandmother amen God had a plan for me even before my granddaddy knew my grandmother amen and said, shorty, she was a 10. Listen, God had planned for me. Amen. Even before my mother knew my father, God had a plan for me. He saw my unformed body in my mother's womb and he had a plan for my life. Every person under the sound of my voice, every person in relevant Kingdom Center today, from the very youngest to the oldest of us, I want you to know that God's got great plans for you. How do I know that? I know that because watch this of what he's placed on the inside of you. I know that because God has placed, watch this, something called a seed. Everybody say seed. Come on, say it loud. Say a seed. You've got a seed called potential that's inside of you. And that seed called potential has, a, has the ability to cause greatness to be produced in your life. And so watch this. I believe that when God created us, the reason he's placed the seed in us, because watch this, he will not allow us to, or he will not demand from us that which he's not already placed in us. Let me say it one more time, and I want you all to hear me good. God will not demand from us something that he's not already placed in us. In other words, everything that we need to become, everything that God's called us to become is already in us. 
Now, now, I don't know, amen, if you get that, but that means that everything that you need for your 2023, amen, is already on the inside of you. As a matter of fact, everything that you need for the next five years, for the next, for the remainder of your life, amen, is already on the inside of you. And because God knows that it's on the inside of you, he's going to demand some stuff from you. See, God didn't create you, amen, just to sit here and pass the time. God says, I know what I've put in them even before they were formed, and therefore, I'm going to call it out of them. That's why some of you, God is not going to allow you to remain in your comfortable places in 2023. That's why some of you, God's going to call you higher, because watch this, he's already seen what's on the inside of you. He's already seen, amen, not just the potential, but what the thing is actually already going to become. Somebody say it's already in me. So God will never demand from me something what he did not already place in me. Watch Genesis 1 verse 11. Then God said, let the land sprout the vegetation, every sort of seed-bearing plant, and trees that grow what seed-bearing fruit. The seeds, watch what he says, the seeds will then produce the kinds of plants and trees from which they came. In other words, a mango has a seed on the inside of it. And so the mango is, watch this, able to reproduce another mango tree because of what's on the inside of it. Everybody say it's on the inside. Come on, somebody say it one more time, say it's on the inside. If you're watching us online, if you're at RKC Florida, I want you to know that everything that you need is already on the inside of you. In other words, here's something we can shout about. Your future harvest is in your present seed. <laughs> oh, man, I'm at the wrong church this morning. Amen. I think y'all came ready for this message on 2023. Amen. Can I just tell you, your present seed is already producing for you your future harvest. Come on now, somebody. The success, the blessings, and the victories of your life are already on the inside of you. It's just a matter of you tapping into it and cultivating it so that you can see it manifest, grow, and produce. You've got to tap into it. Somebody say, tap into it. In other words, don't put limitations on your life. Listen to me, every young person inside this place. Some people will have some things to say about you. They may even try to categorize you. They may try to put you in a box, but everybody say, don't limit me. Amen. Why? Because God hasn't limited you. Amen. So don't put limitations on your life or allow others to do so in this season or in seasons to come because of what you know is already on the inside of you. That's why when God created you, watch this, he did not create us from gold. He did not create us from rubies. He didn't create us from sapphire. Come on. He didn't create us from any other metal substance that we may think is valuable. But God, when he decided to create us, he literally, instead of speaking everything into existence, the Bible says that he put his hand, watch this, down in dirt. <laughs> Everybody say dirt. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor. Say neighbor. You look good and all. But did you know you were created? from dirt. <laughs> okay, y'all, y'all talk to the, the wrong person, they got offended at that. Turn to somebody else and say, neighbor, you smell good this morning, you look good this morning, <laughs> but did you know you were created from dirt? Yeah, see, that's why, amen, when we understand, watch this, this one principle of where we were created from, it gives us no right, amen, to act like we're better than everybody else. Amen. We may be created from different color dirt, amen, hallelujah, but all of us created from what? Dirt, amen, hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, baby, I nothing but dirt, I nothing but dirt, amen, and watch this, and dirt we were created from, and dirt we will return to. And here's the reason, though, God created us from dirt. Not that dirt was of any less valuable, but watch this, when you create something that you want something to be planted in, you can't create it from nothing else but dirt. See, because you can't plant a seed in gold. <laughs> You can't plant a seed in rubies. 
You can't plant a seed in sapphire, but you could plant a seed, Brother Randy, in dirt. And so when God created us, he formed us from dirt because he knew that, watch this, I needed to plant a seed on the inside of them. And the seed that was on the inside of them will give them so much power because, watch this, they will be able to create, not even just create, but they will be able to reproduce life itself because, watch this, they were created from dirt. Everybody say dirt. That's why the, the command to be pass of to be fruitful and, not, and multiply was not a passive one. It was not, it was a direct command to be fruitful and multiply. God didn't ask us, could you be fruitful and multiply? <laughs> he didn't say, maybe if you have time, I'd like for you to be fruitful and to multiply. But watch what he says. He says. It was a direct command because God blessed them, and God said to them, watch this, be, everybody say be. be. <laughs> In other words, he didn't say maybe, he said be. That word be was a command. He says be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. Now, this was not just having kids. Let me say it again, because I don't want the fellas to dismiss me. Hallelujah. That's why when I told y'all to look at somebody and tell them you were created to produce, I know some of y'all fellas got uncomfortable, but you were created to produce. You were created to still carry some stuff on the inside of you. And so he says, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Every, everybody say produce. We were commanded to, to produce just by virtue of what God created us from and that he was able to plant a seed on the inside of us. Amen. That's why Paul makes reference to us metaphor metaphorically to the Corinthian church. He says, watch this, he calls us God's field. It's about to get good in a minute, but everybody say God's field. God's he calls us God's field. Now, in the scriptures, we would see that Paul uses a lot of metaphors when it comes to the church. He uses a body. He uses a field. He uses a building. See, because watch this. We are not just a church building made out of dead stones. We were made out of living stones. You and I are the body that builds up the building of God. That's why, amen, we are alive and not dead. Look at somebody say, we ain't dead. That's why I don't like dead church, and that's why I don't like dead people, amen, at the end of the day, because God didn't call us to be dead and religious. God called us, amen, to be alive. Everybody say life. Amen, yeah, he, he called us to have life, amen. And so Paul, he uses the word of a field. Why? Because it paints the imagery, amen, that God has created us to carry seed and to produce something that is great, to produce a harvest. Every person in 2023, I believe that God is now getting ready to give you the mindset of producing, a mindset of multiplication, a mindset that says, don't put limits on me in this season and this year just because of who you are, amen, a mindset to say, I'm not going to stay where I am because this is not where God designed me to always be, I'm not going to be stuck in this season, come on, I'm going to move, I'm going to grow, I'm going to produce, do I get anybody up inside here that say, yeah, that's me, pastor, because I refuse to stay stuck in this season, I refuse to not allow myself to grow in this season and that's where God wants us God wants us to have a mindset of producing God wants us to have a mindset of multiplication because watch this we are his field and so we were designed to carry seed we were designed to produce and to create that's why we must be careful watch this y'all of the kind of seed we allow to get deposited in our lives <laughs> Ah, let me come for y'all. <laughs> That's why we got to be careful of, watch this, the kind of seed we allow to be planted on the inside of us. See, because by virtue of how God formed you, by virtue of how God created you, you were designed to carry seed. But you weren't just designed to carry seed, you were designed to produce seed. So when we allow, amen, just any kind of seed to be planted into our lives, we got to be careful because that seed could contradict the deposit that God has already placed on the inside of us. And as a result, it could cause the stuff that God wants to grow in our life not to grow in our life. 
That's why, amen, watch this, we must understand this, that when God plants something that's so vitally important to our future, amen, that we be careful of the things that we allow to be deposited into our mind. Where is the field of my life? The field of my life is my heart. The field of my life is in my mind because my mind contains my spirit, my soul, and my, mi my mind contains my intellect, my will, and my emotions. And so this is the field of my mind, and I've got to be careful what I allow, amen, the seeds that I allow to be planted into my field come on everybody say into my field yeah, into your mind field, in, in, into the soul, into the intellect, into the will, into the emotion that's why we got to be careful who we listen to let me say it again. We got to be careful who we listen to because who we listen to is vitally important to our future because words are seeds let me say it again. Words are seed. Watch this. In 1 Corinthians 3, verse 6, Paul, when he was talking, and he was, of course, talking to an ag ag agrarian culture um, where they were actually very familiar with, with planting. They were familiar with farming. Amen. He was talking to them, and he says this when he was talking to them about their growth and how God has certain, so much in, in, in store for them. He says, I plant, but what's this? One waters, but God, what? Gives the what? He said, one plants, one waters, but who gives the increase? Right, and so what's this? He says then, you've got to be careful of the seed that you allow to be planted into your life. And some of us, the reason why we got stinking thinking is because of the seed we allowed to be planted into our hearts. The reason why we've got bad minds is because of the seed we've allowed, amen, to be planted into our hearts. And the seed for some of us that's been planted is taking away from the seed of our dreams and our future. Some of us have allowed seeds to squeeze the life out of the seeds, amen, that God's planted into our life. And we've allowed weeds of doubt and fear to grow. That's why, amen, I come against every spirit of fear in this season, every spirit of doubt in this season, amen. It will not strangle your dream. It will not keep you back. It will not cause you to stay in a comfortable place. Is there anybody up inside here with me that can cancel some stuff that the enemy has been trying to plan? Amen. I cancel every everything that will come against the harvest of your victory. I come against everything that will be coming against the harvest, amen, of your faith, amen. I come against the seed of worry, the seed of complaining, amen. I come against the seed of doubt, the seed of frustration that the enemy may bring to come against what God wants to see produced in your life in 2023. Somebody say, I agree with you, Pastor. I agree, amen, with you. Because watch this. There are some seeds that the enemy will plant, amen, that will try to take away the harvest of your fruit of victory. There are some seeds that the enemy will plant that will try to take away the harvest of your fruit, amen, of the future that God has for you. So what seeds, relevant, have you allowed to be planted? See, because the first thing God told me is, Dury, in order for you to see fruit and multiplication, you got to ask yourself, what seed did you allow to be planted? Because this is going to be the year of fruitful and multiplied, but what is going to be multiplying? <laughs> what kind of fruit are you going to see? <laughs> the fruit that you see is from the seed that you plant. <laughs> if you plant a mango tree, then you can't expect to have oranges. <laughs> Come on, Sister Anya. If you plant a pear seed, then you can't expect to have apples. Because as the seed, let me tell you something, even you know some of the seeds we allow to be planted, it interrupts relationships that could give us access to the thing that God wants us to have. I know I wasn't going to get no help in here today. I can't prepare for y'all not to shout, hallelujah, that's okay, get the substance, amen, can I just tell you? A lot of the seeds we allow to be planted, amen, could interrupt the relationships that God have, amen, to help us to get to the place that he wants us to get. That's why we got to be careful of the seeds of gossip. How many people stop having conversation with you? How many people have stopped having relationship with you? Amen. Even before they came to you, all because of a seed that was planted in their soil that avoided, amen, the relationship that they could have had and they should have had from being productive in their life because of a seed. Every someone say, because of a seed. 
Hallelujah. I'm preaching better than y'all shouting. If you can't say amen, just say ouch. Hallelujah. Amen. What seeds have you allowed to be sowed, Relevant Kingdom Center, or planted in the soil of your soul? What seed? Everybody say, what seed? Somebody need Bible for us, so let me give you some Bible. Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 to 48 says this. Then Jesus used another story to teach them. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like one who planted what? What did he plant? Because if there's good seed, then that means, Brother Jay, there's what? Bad seed. If there's good seed, there's bad seed. See, he say, oh. If there's good seed, then there's what? He says, it's like the, the, the man who planted good seed in his field. That night while everyone was asleep, the man's who? The man's enemy came and planted what? He planted the bad seed among the wheat. And watch this. Here's what people like to do. People like to disrupt your life. And then they push right out. Come on now, somebody. <laughs> People, people like to disrupt your life, and then all of a sudden they pick up their bags and they walk away. How much of y'all could attest to this? I know some of y'all sisters been through some heartbreak. Come on, some of you brothers, amen, y'all know y'all wish y'all never dated them. Come on now, somebody, because they did what they had to do. Look at somebody say, I'm glad you stayed. I'm glad you stayed. I'm glad you stayed. <laughs> but watch this. Here's the thing about seeds. Seeds... You don't see the product, the produce, the, pro the production of it right away, because there's always a process. I won't, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but there's a process that seeds have to go through. And <laughs> Dewey don't get ahead of you. Let's read. It says later. <laughs> it didn't happen right away, Sister Cleo. It happened later. It says later. The wheat grew and heads of grain grew on the plants. But at the same time, the weeds also grew. And then the Bible says, then the man servant came to him and said, you planted good seed in your field. Where did these weeds come from? How much of you all ever noticed that in your life there are some things that you say, well, I've been doing what I thought I should be doing. How come I see in this kind of fruit, Lord? <laughs> he said, then the man answered, an enemy planted weeds. An enemy planted weeds. Here's what I want you to meet, be, be mindful of. That everything then starts with a seed. Everything starts with a what? Seed. Everything starts with a seed. Seeds represents the beginning of something. The start of something which is significant. Seeds represent something that you've been given that, that can create anything you've been promised. Eesh, theory, I like that. Say it again because they miss it. Amen. Say it for the people in the back. Seeds represent anything that you, get, you have been given that can create anything you've been promised. So when God makes you a promise, he's already given you. <laughs> So when God says, you're going to be blessed and you're going out and you're coming in, he's already given you, watch this, the seed. When God says that you're going to be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, he's going to make you first and not last. He's already given you the seed. Because a seed represents everything that you've been promised that gives you the ability to have everything that you want to see. And so life itself starts with a Life itself starts with a seal. See, the material and the immaterial starts with a seed. The building we're sitting in, watch this, it started with the seed of a thought in someone's mind. The harvest of your tomorrow starts with the seed of what you do in your today. The harvest of new territory, I said this to somebody and it made me wanted to put this in the message. The harvest of new territory starts with the seed of battle. Let me say it again. 
The harvest of new territory starts with the seed of battle. So that's why when you say, God, I want you to give me new territory. God, I want to take the territory of my marriage. I want to take the territory of my relationships. I want to take the territory, amen, of everything that you have for me. God, give me the territory. Then when you ask God for the territory, God says in order for you to get new territory, you got to go through some new battles. <laughs> That's why, watch this, when I got battles, sometimes, even though it may shake me initially, it causes me to say, God, I know you got to have something great in store for me because the kind of battle that I've been facing, amen, in 2021 and 2022, it only means that the territory that you got for me in 20, I need somebody to give God praise right there because you know that the seed, amen, is going to cause the harvest and the fruit to be produced. The fruit of success starts, listen to me teenagers, the fruit of success starts with the seed of challenge. You're going to have some challenges in your life. You're going to have some things and some obstacles that you're going to have to overcome in your life. But watch this. When you begin to overcome the challenge, it puts you on the, on the road to success. And it puts you in a place where God could trust you because he could trust you to handle the challenge. He could trust you to handle the success. And so everything, everybody say everything. everything. Everything starts with a seed. The seed of, of, of thankfulness produce a harvest of joy. But the seed of complaining produces the harvest of depression. A lot of you, maybe you've been upset and depressed, amen, and you couldn't find your way out because you didn't take the time to be thankful. Because everything starts with a seed. So here are some important points before I close because I see y'all can't handle too much, amen, and I promise y'all I'm preaching for an hour like New Year's Eve. <laughs> they made me do it. <laughs> Hallelujah. But here are some important points about seeds. They may seem small, small, but don't let their size disqualify their significance. Yeah. That's good. They may seem small, but don't let the size qualify their significance. You got that picture, Kara? Look how small the seed is. You would think, what could this seed do? The seed may be small, but it doesn't mean its impact will be small. Because once that seed, even though it's small, hits the soil that it's supposed to hit, amen, it will multiply. <laughs> And so what am I saying to you? Don't allow what seems small to discourage you in this season. Don't allow, amen, what seems insignificant to make you think that God doesn't have something significant for you in this season. Here's what the Bible says. There is a seed. Watch this. And it is the smallest seed. It says, but watch this. Once that seed is planted... It becomes the biggest tree in the world. Come on, watch this. And it becomes a big tree, not just to be a big tree, but it becomes a big tree, Brother Randy, because it provides sustenance. It provides resource for the birds of the air. Come on, so that they can come and that they can lay their nest in it. Here's what I am telling you. When God puts something in your life, the reason why I know it's going to be great, because it ain't just for you. God has put something in your life, even though it may seem small, because he knows that there are other people that are going to need what he put on the inside of you. That's why you got to guard it. That's why you got to protect it. That's why you can't let the enemy come in and cause things to come and strangle the seed, amen, of greatness that's on the inside of you. Because watch this, even though something may seem small, it is not insignificant. So that's why, amen, I don't worry about small beginnings. I don't worry about small things. Everybody say, don't worry about it looking small right now. Because once it multiplies, come on now, somebody. Eyes have not seen and ears have not heard the things that God has in store for his people. I need somebody to give God a praise right there. Amen. Because some of you have been looking at your mustard seed. Some of you have been looking at that small thing. Amen. That you got in your life and in your hand. And God says, that's okay if you just take care of the small thing. Come on. If I could trust you with the small thing. Amen. Then I could cause that thing to grow and to multiply. 
multiply, y'all ain't even believe me, so maybe I gotta tell you, amen, that's why, amen, when Goliath saw David come to him with a sling and a sing shot, he said, who is this uncircumcised, who is this guy that comes to me, amen, with a sling and a stone, come on, but what he didn't know was that stone was a seed, amen, that was gonna push David to greatness, come on, you don't even know the small thing that's in your hand is the thing that God's gonna use to push you to greatness, I know the business idea, amen, may be only an idea right now, it may seem small and insignificant, but baby, that's your sling, come on, and that ain't just your sling, that's your rock, oh, come on now, somebody, I know people may look at you and think you ain't got all it takes, but baby, tell them, all I need is a swing, amen, and a rock, all I need is a seed, everybody say, all I need is a seed. Hallelujah, because it may seem small, but it could do great things. You're still in shout. So maybe I can't talk about David. I got to talk about that young boy that had two pieces of fish snacks. Amen. A fish snack with two pieces of fish. Amen. And five loaves of bread. I could imagine, amen, that when the disciples were looking for Jesus, amen, to find somebody to get them some food because Jesus said, we need to feed all these people. So, amen, Jesus had a brother Julian. Hallelujah. He had a protocol officer that was going around looking, amen, asking, is there anybody here that can help us with some food so that we could feed, amen, this multitude? And you could see a little boy with all of his faith. You can see a little boy with all of his faith. He, he wears his hand over the crowd. He said, here I am. He says, I got some food. And you know how children are. That's why the Bible says, except you become as a little child. Amen. You can't even see the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Because children have something about their faith. Amen. Because you can imagine this little boy. He says, I got food. Amen. And when they ask him, what kind of food you got? He said, I got two fish. And five of those, it was equivalent to him saying, I got a happy meal to feel a hundred people. Come on now, somebody. Hallelujah. The only thing you can have is my Ronald McDonald toy. Come on. Hallelujah. But I got this small thing. But here's what I love. Because when the little boy took his small thing and he put it into the hand of Jesus, watch what happened. That small thing began to multiply. And watch this. It multiplied so much that he had enough food left over. Amen for, for dinner that night. Come on now, somebody. Everybody say, don't, don't, don't cost my size. Amen to fool you. Don't, don't cause the size of my seed. Amen to fool you. That's why, amen, even when Jesus was asked, who gave the much, the most? The one that gave the most was the woman that gave the least. Because watch that she gave all she had. And that small seed was equivalent to her giving a harvest. Yeah. Hallelujah. Everybody say, don't let size fool you. Size. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. I've been praying, Brother Randy. I said, God, I know what kind of church relevant kingdom center is on this island and in Florida. And I said, God, we've been planted as a seed in Exuma. And some people may get discouraged because it may not look how you thought it would have looked by now. But can I just tell you, baby, hold on. Because we ain't seeing nothing yet. Amen. A harvest is coming. All we got to do is be faithful. Yeah, it may only be about 100 of us or 50 of us or 60 of us. But baby, I said, God, I could see 10% of this island. That means about 700 people. Amen. Going to be connected to the RKC because we may be a seed right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm just glad I'm at the beginning stages, baby. I'm just glad, amen, that I'm here right now. Amen. So I could be able to testify of the good things God's done. Look at somebody say, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Amen. It may seem small, but watch this. It's a seed. Now, here's the thing that's going to cause you all to stop shouting now. <laughs> Seeds can't grow unless... It is sowed. The first thing about a seed is it got to be released. And sometimes we hold on to our seed. <laughs> That's why some of y'all, when God calling y'all to do something, it's like him having to kick against the pricks and, and fighting with a bull. Amen. Because what's this? You got it. And you saying, God, I know you called me to this, but I ain't there yet. <laughs> it hitting somebody. Some of us, we wait until we're perfect, 
We wait and we say, God, before I can release this, I got to see something more. And God's saying, baby, you ain't going to see something more until you release it, until you actually stop fighting against me and start to move into everything that I've called you to move into. He says, you ain't going to see it unless you release it. Seeds have to be sown. Not just sown, but watch the seeds. They have to be cultivated. Everybody say cultivated. So the way you discover your seed and the potential that you have is to first then discover your purpose. I was so happy when we were having prayer that somebody came up and they testified about the fact that they were asked a question of what, were their pur what was their purpose. Watch this. And all of a sudden that question, amen, was almost like it helped to cultivate, amen, their thought to say, you know what? What did God create for, create for me to do? What did God place to me? And watch this. He discovered his uh seed he discovered his potential by discovering his purpose and his purpose was connected to his passion what was it that i love to do what was it because see everything that you were supposed to do is already in you and the minute you find that thing something's gonna leap <laughs> Come on, just like when John the Baptist, amen, was in the stomach of his mom Elizabeth and Mary, amen, watch this, the seeds, amen, that were on the inside of them began to leap, amen, let me tell you something, here's how you know you found your purpose, because listen, you can't wait to do it. Come on, you look forward to doing it. That even when the challenges come, you, st you stand there and you stay faithful because, God, I love to do this. I wouldn't rather do anything else than this. That's why I know I was called the pastor. Because, God, this is what I love to do. Amen. Yeah, people just get on my nerves. Come on now, somebody. Amen. I feel like telling some folk a puppies in my mind. Hallelujah. But, God, no, no, you call me to this. And so, watch this. You're going to give me the grace that I need. You're going to give me the patience I need. You're going to give me the endurance that I need. And that's what I want to tell some of you. God's already called you. Amen. To what he's called you to. And you could find it by discovering what you're passionate about. What do you love to do? Look at your neighbor and say, what do you love to do? Now, here's the next key. Amen. What you love to do is not just going to be something that builds you up. What you love to do is always connected to somebody else. That's the seed. Everybody say the seed. See, because when God planted that seed in you, he didn't just put it in you, sister Ty, for you. He put it in you for somebody else. Come on now, somebody. Everybody say, I can't be selfish yeah. with the seed. Hallelujah. I can't be selfish with the seed. I'm almost done. And so seeds must be cultivated. And when seeds are cultivated, then it must be entrusted. You got to be entrusted with the seed. Let me ask you all a question. Can God trust you with the seed that he's given to you? Can God trust you, amen, to take care of the seed? Can God trust you, amen, to cultivate the seed? Can God trust you, amen, to water the seed? Because if he could trust you to water the seed, if he could, if he could trust you to release the seed, and if he could trust you to water the seed, watch this, he's the one that's going to make the seed grow. He's going to make the seed multiply. He's going to make the seed increase. So seeds has to be sown in order for it to be grown. Seeds has to be released. Seeds has to be cultivated. And you've got to be trusted with it. Now watch this. The minute you release a seed, the Bible says that the seed goes into the, the, to the ground. It goes into the earth. But watch this, y'all. When the seed goes into the earth, and Kari could play something soft so that they can know we be starting to wind down in the same New Year's Eve night. <laughs> but when the seed goes into the ground, guess what it does? It dies. Here's what it does. It not, it, only, it not only dies, but under the surface of that ground, where no one could see it, when nothing looks like it's happening, watch that something is happening beneath the surface. And I came to tell some of you, God said the seed that he's given to you, amen, he gave you the seed. And even in the midst of all of 2020 and 2021, it looked like nothing was happening for you. It looked like things, amen, weren't coming together. That, that it seemed like things weren't coming, amen, together the way you thought it would have come together. But God's saying, don't worry about it because my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways, amen. And even though you don't see it, amen, here's what seeds have to go through. They have to go through what we call a process, 
Come on, everybody say process. Yeah, don't watch this. Stop the process because, amen, of what you expected in your mind. Allow the process to take place of what, because of what you know that God has in store for you. Everybody say, don't stop the process. The process is preparation for you to receive your harvest. It may not look like it right now. Things may not look like it's happening right now. But baby, something is happening with your seed. Something is happening with your seed. Somebody say, I got to sow it. It's got to die. That's why some things been falling off of your life. That's why some people been falling off of your life. That's why God, amen, been making you uncomfortable with certain relationships that you've been in. Come on now, somebody. Because he's saying there's some things that have to die in order for you to multiply. Come on now, somebody. There's some things, amen, that's got to gotta fall, amen, off in order for you to be fruitful the way I need you to be fruitful. Amen. So don't worry about what you're going through right now. Just worry about what you're going to. Let me say that one more time. I'm done, y'all. Don't worry about what you're going through. Worry about what you're going to. Don't even worry about it. Give praise, amen, about what you're going to. Because you know the process is making you prepared, amen, for the harvest that you will receive. Everybody say, I got a seed on the inside of me. Come on, you got to say it loud and proud online. Amen. Say it for me if you're online. Amen. Drop it in the chat if you're online. And say, watch this. I've got everything I need. To become everything that God's designed me to be. Come on, say it louder than that. Say, I've got everything I need to become everything that God needs me to be. So in 2023, know that you got a seed. You got a seed on the inside of you that's God's that's going to grow, that's going to multiply, that's going to produce fruit. And eyes have not seen and hands have not heard what God got in store for the relevant kingdom center for you. I need somebody to give God a praise if you're thankful for the seed. Come on, you could do better than that. Somebody give God a praise if you're thankful for the seed. Here's my bottom line. Amen. At relevant kingdom center, you know the pastor done when they give you a bottom line. Here's my bottom line. Everything, everybody say everything. Everything you need for the next 12 months of 2023 is already on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Parents, everything you need for your children is all inside of you already. Come on, nothing is going to be lacking. Nothing is going to be broken. Nothing is going to be missing because everything you need is already on the inside. I want to pray for you today. How much of you say, Pastor Dury, I want to protect the seed that God's given me. I believe that there is something on the inside of me that God has planted in me, and I know I've got to see it produced. I, I, I know I'm going to see the harvest from it, but the enemy has been trying to one plant other seeds. The enemy is trying to be planting seeds of doubt, planting seeds of fear, planting seeds of worry. Amen. Because I was thinking about how I'm going to do certain things, and when I didn't see it work out, I started to get worried and fearful. But, but Pastor, I want to know, amen, that God's going to truly do what he says that he's going to do in my life because of the seed that's on the inside of me. Amen. How much of you say, Pastor, do I want you to pray with me because I indeed want to see the harvest from the seed that God's put on the inside of me. I want you to raise your hand. Shoot it up. Amen. Hallelujah. Keep those hands up. As a matter of fact, can you stand real quickly? Amen. Can everybody stand really quickly? Amen. And I want you to shoot those hands up as high as you can. Father, I thank you for every person under the sound of my voice. I thank you that they now know, Father, that there is a seed on the inside of them of potential, a seed of power, a seed of purpose. And Lord, I know now that the enemy would try to come and try to plant other things into the field of their mind, the field of their hearts. 
to discourage them, to cause them to doubt. Father, the thing that you've spoken to them, but right now, in the name of Jesus, I declare for every individual under the sound of my voice in Relevant Kingdom Center that they're going to be individuals that will see produce because they were commanded to produce. They were commanded to create. Father God, thank you, Father God, that they're not going to be stagnant. They're not going to be stuck, Father God. They're not going to be, amen, complacent, but they're going to create. They're going to produce. They're going to move to the next level of their life that you will have for them. This is their year to be fruitful. This is their year, Father God, for multiplication. This is the year, Father, they will see fruit in their marriages. This is the year they will see fruit, oh God, in their children. This is the year they will see fruit, Father God, in their relationships. This is the year, Father God, that they will see change and they will see produce for everything that you've called them to, for everything that you've promised them, because everything, God, that you've promised them has already been given to them in the form of a seed. And so we bless you and we give you praise and glory and honor in Jesus' mighty name. Can somebody give God a praise if you were blessed? By